Hello everyone and welcome to the last game we'll be showing from the Charity Cup Finals. It's Jan Shishtov Duda versus Magnus Carlsen and this is the second game of the playoffs. So for those of you who weren't following what's been happening, Magnus won the first match, then Duda retaliated in, in the second match, which was incredible because Magnus won the first game of the second match uh, and then Duda won two games in a row. So that was... Um... Uh, really, really awesome. Uh, and then he forced tie breaks and the first game of the tie breaks, Magnus won with the white pieces. So this is the second game of the tie breaks uh, and Duda now needs a win to uh, push the uh, competition even further into the tie breaks and to hopefully to reach Armageddon. So this is now Blitz uh, and uh, the variations uh, get much, much uh, uh, sharper. So you guys will enjoy this one. Uh, but just a quick uh, announcement or rather not an announcement, um, uh, sort of information sharing for you guys uh Ding Liren has started playing a classical tournament so he is on his way to uh, getting all the games that he needs to qualify for the candidates tournament he already won the first two games uh today he's playing the third one so we'll see uh he's already 2803 something in ratings uh, so he might um, uh, even overtake uh, Firuja as the number two player in the world uh before reaching the candidates uh, so that being said let's check out what happened here uh it's a very very short game so do that with the white pieces opens with e4 and magnus goes for c6 he goes for the Karo Khan defense we have d4 d5 and now duda plays f3 this is the so-called fantasy variation of the Karo Khan. we have e6 and now knight to c3 we have knight to f6 e5 grabbing more space in the center that's a pretty standard idea knight f to d7 now preparing c5 knight c to e2 making room for the pawn to be pushed to c3 after black plays c5 and this is exactly what happened c5 c3 uh, and knight the c6 uh we have f4 strengthening the uh the center here and now uh there are a couple of moves that are very popular in this position like a5 or we could uh, strike against the white's a very strong center with f6 but magnus first goes bishop to e7 he wants the castle and then he's going to uh, try and uh, break the strong center so here knight f3 uh we have castles and now h4 uh duda is um is in a must win situation and he will play this game uh well everything to win uh magnus plays f6 a standard idea here uh, but this also means that he has weakened the e6 pawn and uh, it might not seem like a pretty big deal but for the moment the, the e6 pawn is not defended and duda uh, finds a very interesting way of how to exploit this with a3 uh, a5 by magnus and now knight the g3 the knight uh, again will be very useful here we are hoping to get our bishop to d3 the queen might come to h5 the, the knight will also uh, have a have something to do here but magnus just plays queen to b6 he says there is nothing to worry about on the king's side duda says all right bishop to d3 and now c captures on d4 uh, so what can Duda play here? Well, there is only one thing he can do, and that is to go for the win. And that is knight to g5. Now he's threatening to pick up the h7 pawn. He also opened up this diagonal for the queen to come to h5. Uh, it's a very tricky position. Magnus is very, very close to winning the entire thing, but he has to play uh, the absolute uh, correct move here. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the move uh, that uh, will, well, uh, it's not a winning move for black, but it's it's a move that uh, uh, will make it very, very hard for white to, to continue playing the game. So uh, have at it. Uh, what would you play here with black? So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not capturing the knight. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is, of course, h6. But uh, I imagine you guys uh, probably thought, okay, we're not capturing the knight. You were, uh, well, considering maybe f f5 and h6. Uh, but we're going to show what happens on each of these. Because if knight is captured, then after bishop captures on h7, you just resign. If king f7, queen h5 ends the game. And if you capture the, the bishop, king h8 also ends uh, just queen h5. So after king captures on h7, seven we just open up the h file for the rook and after we move the king g6 and that's it all of these squares are now covered queen h5 queen to h7 will be checkmate so what happens after f5 it's uh, also an interesting idea the problem is uh white will get uh, an well so, sort of an equal position after knight captures on e6 we're gonna play knight c captures on e5 open up an attack towards the knight here knight captures on f8 we're gonna play knight captures on d3 with check queen captures king captures and now after c captures on d4 let's say knight f6 and it's a uh, well 
uh, sort of an equalish position, black, white might castle here, and the, the game continues. However, after the move Magnus played h6, uh, Duda's position is not uh, not a fun one to play. So he goes for the e6 pawn. Uh, we said that it might seem like a, a hard target to acquire, but uh, Duda, Duda does it anyway. Knight captures an e6, and now Knight d captures an e5. So grabbing the e5 pawn and opening up the attack towards the knight, Duda grabs the rook on f8, and now knight captures on d3 with check we have queen captures on d3 and the bishop captures on f8 and this is now the scary position that the duda finds himself in there is only one move that allows him to keep playing the game with uh, having just a slightly worse position and that is rook to b1 uh, the reason for this will be revealed shortly but the duda played bishop to d2 uh, and now the position is uh, winning for magnus and there are a couple of ways that you could play this magnus goes for the absolute most precise one of course you don't want to capture on b2 then duda Duda just castles and then he gets what he wants. But after bishop to g4, now uh, it's not so easy. Now you're not castling queen side. You're definitely not castling king side. If you castle king side, just captures here, opens up a discovery towards the white king. And if bishop e3 attacking the queen, blocking check, just d4. And now bishop f2 captures on b2, have a pass pawn on b2, this is game over. So after bishop g4, Duda tries queen to g6, now attacking the bishop here. But now queen captures on b2. Now attacking the rook here, so you have to react to this. Rook to b1, now you know why the rook belonged on b1 all along. And now rook to e8 with check. It's pretty much the only move that wins, um, but it's uh, it's an easy one to spot. So Magnus just plays it, rook to e8 with check. King to f1, and now queen captures on d2. We have queen captures on e8, uh, giving up the rook as well. Uh, also, uh, after this, rook to e8 check. If you just go for queen captures, uh, th then you no longer guard the rook if anyone missed that for some reason. Uh, so yeah, uh, just a king to f1 with queen captures on d2. Now queen captures on e8, but now just queen captures on f4 with check. King to g1 with queen captures on g3. Everything completely falls apart. Duda plays rook captures on b7, but now after knight to e5, there is absolutely nothing more for white to do here. Uh, and uh, of course, you, you can't even deliver a single check. So it was in this position on move uh, uh, 24, or rather maybe it's 25. No, on move 24, uh, that young Shishtov Duda resigned the game and a brilliant, brilliant victory for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so uh, you could continue with something like rook to b1, but uh, like d captures on c3, and that's, I mean, uh, there, there's no playing this. And if you try something like rook here, uh, it's actually a mate in three, just queen to e1 with check, king will move, knight f3 check, and that's after this is captured, we're going to play queen to f2 with checkmate. Bishop covers the h3 square, and that's it. So, of course, after knight e5, Duda resigned, and uh, Magnus takes yet another victory uh, in this uh, Meltwater Champions chest, or, or rather Charity Cup, as this one was renamed into it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, really, really impressive stuff. Magnus said in an interview after the game that he completely collapsed on the second day, but that he was uh, still able to prevail. Uh, and, well, for Duda, this was definitely a great, great experience, as he is, like I said, one of the members of the 2022 Candidates Tournament, and if he wins, he will be challenging Magnus Carlsen for the world title, if Magnus Carlsen will even defend his title, but here he got a little taste of what it uh, what it would be like. Uh, of course, it would be a completely different story, uh, it would be much, much harder, it would be uh, much more preparation would go into that, but uh, here you, you, you had uh, eight, eight rapid games against the world champion and also two blitz games, so it was, uh, well, uh, definitely a uh, good experience for Duda. And, uh, well, he almost uh, he almost bounced back and won the entire thing. Uh, winning day two after losing the first game was incredible feat in itself. Uh, but then in Blitz, Magnus was just, uh, well, it, it, it was just his day. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are now uh, shifting to the coverage of the uh, of the uh, Berlin uh, FIDE Grand Prix. And if Ding plays a nice game or two, we're going to cover that as well. So if you have any of your own favorite games uh, from uh, these events, do share in the comments using hashtag suggestion. I will go over it and, of course, uh, show them. I already have a, a few that you guys suggested. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I ended this short coverage of the Charity Cup. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Symbolic Donation from a subscriber. David Kimura, Mehmet Sonmez, uh, OpenSea Smokey Dule, and Tyler Rechko for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing uh, the coverage of the other events that are currently taking place in the world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent start of your week.